Like flies are attracted away from their house by a fly trap, we can attempt to lure attackers, typically automated, to a fake server called a honeypot, rather than a real production server. This allows us to safely analyze attacks on servers that don't contain any sensitive data, and then protect against those attacks on the real server. One can gain useful intelligence from honeypots when deploying a server. What does the attack landscape look like? How does it affect which resources are required? And what IP addresses or geographical locations can be blacklisted to prevent attacks? Honeypots run real services with fake data on somewhat secure systems. The systems are secured enough that they cannot be used against the organization running the honeypot, but insecure enough that it allows attacks to happen. For example, it leaves ports open that might not typically be open. Honeypots should never contain sensitive data, but the more realistic they seem, the more successful they are likely to be. Additionally, the closer the environment of the honeypot is to your actual server, the more accurate your findings will be. Making your honeypot too similar to your actual environment could cause more problems than it solves since it exposes your system environment, which may have known vulnerabilities. In this video, we'll be looking at Teapot. Teapot is a free and open source honeypot. It is based on Debian Linux and heavily utilizes Docker to run multiple honeypots. Teapot is designed to be a very user-friendly way to set up and use a honeypot. It provides a dashboard and administrative tools via a web interface and multiple tools for monitoring and analyzing attacks. There are several advantages to Teapot. It's easy to use, it's easy to set up, it has low maintenance, where the idea is to deploy and leave, and if anything breaks, simply reboot. It has good presets. It also runs multiple honeypots, yielding a larger attack surface. Some disadvantages of Teapot are that it's very bloated, it's slow, requiring excessive hardware, and requires a lot of data to install or keep up to date. To demonstrate Teapot, I'm going to launch a few attacks against the virtual machine running it. Imagine we are an automated tool attacking a target we think is the API of a target system. What we don't know is we are attacking a honeypot and not the actual server. We want to gain root access to the system via SSH so we can start an SSH dictionary attack. To do this we use Hydra and set the attack target IP address and select a small password dictionary included with Kali Linux. Once the attack starts, we can see that the honeypot has started logging our attacks and builds a word cloud of which username and password combinations we are using. An administrator can now see that Kauri SSH honeypot has been attacked. They can change the username to one not in the list of attempted usernames, ensure they don't use a password that was in the dictionary attack, or can entirely block SSH access from the internet. Let's launch a second attack. This time a denial of service attack. We use Pent menu to launch a TCP signed flood attack. The honeypot starts to log multiple Suricata stream packets with invalid checksums or broken acts. An administrator can now identify that it is critical that flood attacks are protected against and checks that the server software has controls for that vulnerability and might implement a CDN to take the brunt of the attack. We can also show that Suricata honeypot will identify a port scan. We use Nmap to run a port scan on the Honeypot's IP address and see that Suricata logs the port scan. Installation is relatively simple, but can take several hours. Ensure that your system meets the system requirements. Teapot has hefty requirements, but it can still run on a lower end machine if you aren't expecting many attacks. You can set it up on a physical machine, but it might be advantageous to install it on a cloud provider like AWS. You are likely to run into fewer maintenance problems, and it should be significantly more capable than your own hardware and internet connection. We will be installing it in the virtual machine for demo purposes. This can also be advantageous of a physical hardware, as it is easy to restore the system to a previous snapshot in case of a system error or security breach. Next, download the ISO image. To install this on a physical machine, you can burn the ISO to a flash drive and boot from it. To install on the cloud, follow the command line instructions on the git repo readme. The ISO is around 40 megabytes, but is only a web installer. The setup requires multiple gigabytes. Create a virtual machine, set the type to Linux, and allocate enough disk space such that it can be installed. I recommend setting the virtual disk to dynamic mode so that it uses only the amount that's needed. 
Set the virtual machine to use as many CPU calls as possible, and set the network card to bridge mode and enable promiscuous mode. This will allow Teapot to log more information more accurately. Now mount the ISOs you downloaded, boot the VM and select Teapot and press enter. Set your region. US layout is recommended for South Africa. Set your proxy info if needed, wait for it to connect to the internet, and select an archive mirror of your choosing. Wait a few minutes for it to download and install. Wait for the VM to reboot, unmount the ISO and reboot again if needed. Follow the setup and you've now installed Teapot.